all right kids it's been all winter and here we are first moto vlog of 2022 I don't even know what today is it's Saturday May 21st Wow and look at the garbage everywhere all these little whirly bird helicopter things all the yellow crap with the um, pollen stuff just makes everything yellow we're supposed to get thunderstorms later today so I'm going to take a quick ride so I haven't done a moto vlog yet and I need to plus I'm gonna go through the city here the harbor and so forth and see if I can find any stupid drivers because they are out in force lately absolutely positively not paying any attention whatsoever so how's everyone been? Haven't done a moto vlog in a while. I've had a presence on Facebook, mostly sharing all of my Wordle score results and so forth. Talking about a few things with the bike. I've done some work on the bike. Had some new tires purchased over the winter. They were on sale. I had them installed last week. They are Bridgestones. Couldn't tell you the model number or anything like that. But I took the Dunlop Elite Fours off. They lasted, uh, I'm going to say, around 11 to 12,000 miles. So I think they did pretty good. And now I have these Bridgestones. I'm going to give those a shot, see how well they work. I changed out the final drive oil for the first time, did that myself. And I did the adventure of changing out an air filter. Oh my goodness, what an adventure that was. It took about five hours. And the whole time I'm thinking, how much would this have cost if I'd have let a dealership service department do it? Oh my goodness, no thank you. So, did it myself. Over the winter, I also invested in some maintenance videos from Cruise Man. Thank you for putting those together. They are incredible. They're thorough. They have everything that you need. Talks about the tools you need to get the job done. Uh, it, it was really good. So I saved money just by doing the air filter myself. Let's see, what else have I done? I have also uh, purchased some motorcycle specific prescription glasses. They're shatterproof so that I can wear those and not have to worry about the really expensive glasses that I bought and paid for that I wear every day. I've decided that wearing contact lenses just isn't my thing anymore. While they are nice, the vision's really good, just not comfortable wearing them. So decided glasses was easier, uh, especially when I'm working on a computer screen a lot of the day. And I have progressive bifocals, which is nice. They've improved that progressive portion of the lens quite a bit since the last time I purchased glasses. Um, they're very good. I got them so that they will go extra dark, I guess. I don't know, they extra active or something. I got the works for the uh, regular glasses and for these riding glasses, which I'm wearing now. So I have no idea where I'm going today. I am just going to ride. Enjoy this little bit of weather before the rain moves in for the balance of the weekend. Clay should be at the theater. He can't ride today. There's a final performance of a dance recital this afternoon, so he's probably already at the theater. And I'm going to steer clear of the theater because there's a lot of activity going on. So today will be a day to just ride and enjoy a little bit of the sunshine here, talk about some other things. The biggest thing that has uh, come across my life here this week has to do with the seat on the Goldwing. The seat um, has been failing a bit. To give you a little bit of history, when I purchased the bike it came with the Honda Goldwing stock seat. 
and the stock seat is pretty miserable. I can't believe they tore down the old Ashtabula Clinic. I worked inside that building right after college. Worked in the basement. So that's kind of sad to see it come down. But progress is progress. Things change. So anyway, ah, Ashtabula at its finest. I love it. So getting back to the seat, I bought this with the stock seat on it, and the next spring I sent it off to a place called uh, uh, Bike Solutions, and he does what's called Wing Soft, which is to take the existing seat apart, do some upgrades to the foam so that it would be more comfortable. And it cost around $600, I believe. You send your seat to them, and within a week it comes back. And it did. And it was fantastic. Uh, I'm still riding on that seat right now. It's very comfortable. It feels great. Uh, I appreciate the work that he did. It was a big improvement over the stock seat. However, I have a seam that is coming apart. Cancel. I have a seam that is coming apart on the seat on what would be my right side underneath where my butt is right now and the seam is coming more and more apart so I call a guy in Geneva who I worked with when I was at Delta Railroad and talked to him said hey can you do a repair on a seat told him what was going on he said oh my goodness I would have four days worth of work in that even with the pattern and it would be so difficult to do would be it wouldn't be cost effective to redo the seat so I looked on eBay for stock seats and even clay has the original OEM stock seat but it wouldn't have the wing stuff upgrade that I purchased and got which is um, a little bit uh, troubling because I really like the fact that uh, I got the wing stuff upgrade, very comfortable. So I would essentially be going backwards by putting an OEM seat back on it. Well, this is my third gold wing. I had a 1995, or was it a 93? I don't even remember now. Uh, it was red, 1500 cc gold wing. Then in 2005, I bought a brand new 1800 cc gold wing. And then in 2018, I got the one that I'm riding on right now. Um, so, and none of the seats have been comfortable. The 1500 appeared to have a different kind of seat on it. I don't know what the brand was, but it didn't appear to be stock because it had some uh, patterns in it that indicated somebody actually made it. And it wasn't bad. I've had worse. Um, pretty comfortable. But the 1800 stock seat, ugh. I never did change it out. And I said, if I ever have a Goldwing long term, I'm going to get a stock seat. Well, I had that Goldwing 14 years and I never put a uh, custom seat on it. And then, um, got this one, 2018. It's now 2022. And going into the fourth year and this seat is failing now I'm not saying that the wing soft upgrade had any contributing factor to it I in fact I don't think so although I will say that the foam underneath it changed the contour of the seat but you would believe that the cover of it would be just fine and shouldn't be an issue now what I will say is that I have to actually flip my leg up and over to get on the bike because of the backrest I haven't found a really good way to get on the bike from the ground and I am NOT a fan of putting my foot on the foot peg to get onto the bike because there's nothing that will be steadying me should the side stand fail and I have seen side stands fail before um, they do rust they can break they're not meant for <coughs> excuse me while I wait for this guy who pulls out in front of me
so anyway, um, I just need to come up with a better way to get on the bike, and I haven't quite figured that out yet. So I believe that my foot gliding across the seat is likely a contributing factor to the tear in that particular seam and the location of it. So I'm going to blame more me at rubbing across it with my foot multiple times over and over with the motorcycle boot has probably caused a lot of the problem. Wow, the potholes. They're the size of the Grand Canyon. My goodness, it got right down to the red brick and is tearing the red brick out. Wow, come on, Ashtabula. My goodness. It just made repaving of roads so cheap these days. They just don't last at all. So, since I don't have a viable option to have the seat repaired, I decided, well, not because Clay got an Ultimate brand seat for his bike right off. He got it for other reasons. He's a tall gentleman. The stock seat was not particularly comfortable for him. So he got an Ultimate seat that is a tall boy or a tall rider seat. And it moves the seating position back an inch and a half. And that gave him enough room that he's very comfortable on it. Plus, the way that the seat is contoured, it is more flat, which will allow more backside coverage. And that helps. Um, honking at my nephew. Bought a new house, and that's where he lives over there. So I thought, I'm going to try this ultimate seat out, take the plunge, do what I have threatened to do, and just never did it because I'm a cheapskate. And just felt like, I'm not going to get a custom seat. I won't keep the bike long enough to do a custom seat. Yeah, well, this is the last motorcycle I will likely own in my lifetime. Unless I get something smaller. I don't picture getting a different motorcycle. It just doesn't get much better than this one. They'll make better, they'll make bigger. But for me, I've made this motorcycle mine. It's no longer stock in a lot of ways. Many, many ways, actually. Um, including handlebar position, the seating, of course, adding um, highway floorboards, some other things, lighting especially. Creature comforts and visibility additions. Uh, that was uh, what I wanted. And no, I am not putting a cup holder on here. Not going to do it. Uh, if anyone thinks I'm going to put a cup holder on it, because that seems to be a gold wing staple, put the cup holder on it so that you can actually uh, have a drink sitting here that you can grab. Now, I'm a little bit more innovative in that I use a, um, a camel back when I'm riding so that I can have water whenever I want and it's not in my way. It's actually on my back like a backpack. So, so I pulled the trigger on the Ultimate Seat. It's a company out of Canada. They are called ultimateseats.ca. They uh, did not have any gold wing seats in stock. None. She said they're flying off the shelves, which I believe. It's a pricey seat, which I would expect for a custom seat. They want your measurements, they want your weight, and they will make it appropriately. It will replace the seat that I'm on, which is a one-piece seat, which covers the rider and the passenger. It will come with its own backrest, and it will replace the backrest that is for the passenger that is part of the bike in the far back. It's attached to the trunk, so everything will get replaced. It has its own seat heater, which will work with the controls that are in front of me. Now, I'm looking forward to it. I, I've taken the plunge. It's painful. 
I really would have liked the money saved up for my vacation, but the reality is this is something that I should do at this point. I'm not getting any younger and a comfortable seat uh, will go a long way to enjoying this motorcycle for years to come. So there's that story. You know what, I'm going down Route 84 and I'm doing 60 miles an hour in a 45 zone. I'm really happy that nobody's be behind me with you know, LED beacons flashing because they could. This road is in very good shape, feels very good. I'm going to get on 84 and head over towards Route 7. It is a nice day, it's 84 degrees according to the bike. And for those of you not on Facebook, I'll show a picture, I'll pop it up right now, showing when I did the air filter, I neglected to mention that when I did the air filter, I found out that uh, my air filter, the top of it became a hotel for a or several mice who put a whole bunch of stuff there, and I don't know who all was involved with it. Um, I'm sure that there was a meeting of the minds and the mice all came together and said, let's get all this stuff and uh, we will make a home inside Dave's Gold Wings air filter. So that was quite a shock to see that when I had the bike into 84 different pieces and saw that that was there underneath the cover. And since I put the bike back together, cleared it all out, put the new air filter in. I've gotten some improved gas mileage, but people have said, well, what about, didn't you see a noticeable difference in the motorcycle performance? Uh, no, I didn't. Nothing appreciable anyway. It was very simplistic. Uh, I was getting on average 47, 48 miles to gallon, and I saw no issues whatsoever with the fuel mileage, so that wasn't really an indicator at all. But it was certainly an indicator when I took it out, and I started getting, right now I'm at 46.7, but I'm not you know, city traffic and that sort of thing. It's going to change a little bit. But if I'm on a straight road, just going and going and with very little stopping, I'm getting 52 miles a gallon, which is amazing for a six-cylinder engine um, that puts out a lot of uh, horsepower and torque for the size of machine that it's on. So that was quite the surprise. I'm surprised that I haven't passed a motorcycle. Or if I did, I haven't paid attention. Very strange. I heard them going by my house earlier. And like I said, I put the motorcycle away because uh, I had it out all night. And it looked like rain was going to move in about 1 o'clock. And I just I was a little tired from the week. And I said, you know, I'm not going to bother with taking a ride this morning. And when I saw that the rain predicted for 1 o'clock really wasn't going to come to fruition, they're saying more 5.30 now. Okay, yep, I need to get out and get a ride in because it's going to rain the rest of the today and looks like tomorrow as well. I can't believe that place is still in existence, but hey, if you have a clientele, keep it going, right? So now on Route 84 in Kingsville, heading east. This will be a nice little ride. So really that's all that's been going on. The theater got back opened up. For those not familiar with ABOB and the trials and tribulations of the heating system, the 50-year-old boiler in the theater failed completely and it is on the fritz. It's not going to get repaired. It's not repairable. So we've been trying to figure out how to get it replaced at a cost that's not going to completely break the bank. Um, so we haven't had shows in the wintertime because we can't heat the building. But we did do um, Burger Town last fall before we shut it down. And then we did a show called Play On which is a show about a community theater trying to put on a show written by a local author that doesn't know what she's doing and the plot of the story is disgustingly awful. 
so that was a lot of fun and the audience reaction to that show was amazing i was a little concerned theater people would understand the show completely and enjoy what was happening in fact it was almost like people who perform on stage will get adhd and flashbacks of stuff from seeing some of the things that happen on the stage um, we did a great job at it. We worked very hard on it because it was so challenging from the aspect that you have an actor who's playing a character who is an actor who's playing another character. So it got a little bit complex and it was tough to master, but I think the end result was very, very good. Um, so pleased with that. They are in auditions. I'm sorry, auditions. They're in rehearsals for... Putnam County Spelling Bee, I can never remember which anniversary it is, 23rd, 24th, I don't know what it is. So they're in rehearsals for that, and that will be the end of June and the first weekend of July. Motorcycle classes have started back up at Lakeside High School. Attendance has been pretty good. Um, we need more instructors. If you've been endorsed at least three years and you have an interest in making a few dollars, trying to help people learn how to ride motorcycle. There are training classes so that you too can become an instructor. It is a lot of fun. Are you kidding me right now? They put a Dollar General out here? It really is. Dollar Generals are becoming like dandelions. They pop up everywhere. I cannot believe this. You have got to be kidding me. Oh. Those memes showing a Dollar General popping up on Mars. Yeah, I believe it. Oh, I just, I can't believe that. Now, mind you, I do support Dollar General. I go there quite a bit because I get things. Uh, milk cereal, bread, some other things here and there. Um, I don't make it my grocery store per se, but you know, it's good to get a few little things here and there. Most other things that I consume, soap, shampoo, all that kind of stuff, I get on Amazon. And I usually get it in such numbers that um, you know, I have plenty of it to go for several months. I probably have enough shampoo to go another year. Laundry detergent I make in bulk, just from different ingredients. I find it to be very cost effective. I can't even remember what it costs right now, but I think it's around $40 for all of the ingredients, and I may be high on that. And the stuff will last a year, and it uh, does a very, very good job. So... I don't mind it at all. Just takes a little bit of effort, maybe an hour or two, a little more than an hour to mix it all together and make it work, and then you're good to go. And I just put it in a popcorn tin, and uh, it lasts me, like I say, a little over a year. Good stuff. Oh, coming up on Route 7, which way to go? No idea. It's 11.45, so I don't want to go to the theater. They're going to be opening the doors soon for the show. I think it starts at 1, so again, staying away from there. So I'm going to head south on Route 7 and just see what Pierpont has to offer. Maybe I'll go into Andover and cut across a bit. Wow, what happened to that truck? Dude. Um, wow, I think somebody missed the pavement. So, heading south on Route 7. It's very gorgeous. And if I haven't already, which I know I have, and I apologize for all the wind noise, pretty typical of 
when you're going down the road and riding. Now I have taken these routes a little bit before. I've ridden well before today. I just haven't brought the GoPro with me because I keep forgetting about it. I said, today I'm getting the GoPro, darn it. I must have it. I'm fiddling around a little bit because the extra cord for the microphone is bopping around a little bit and I want to do something with it. I don't think it's going to work. Alright, we'll see what that does. So I'll keep you with me until I get down to Andover and then uh, I'll bid my farewell. So what am I going to talk about for the next 15 minutes or so? Uh, one of the things I noticed along this route here is how much more Amish are uh, in the area. I mean, a lot. Um, I'm seeing Amish in places I've never seen them before. I guess they shouldn't be surprised because Ashtabula County does have a lot of land. And uh, as long as they can purchase it and do something with it, which is what they like to do. Where's all the signs and stuff for Raceway 7? Oh, there's Juwan. Okay. Glad to see that they're still able to operate everything else that's been going on. Other than that, I hope everyone's got a nice summer planned. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to the vacation. I'm going to be taking a vacation with Clay and Melissa. Um, she's going to be coming along. Um, she's going to, I believe, meet us in one of the Carolinas where her parents live and then she's going to join us on the motorcycle ride going to Florida. So looking forward to that and I hope the plans work out that we can do that. Um, we've got the date set aside so it looks like it will be a lot of fun. I believe this bike is ready to go. I've done everything maintenance wise that it needs to be ready for that trip new tires, it's got a fresh oil, uh, fresh final drive oil, new air filter, so it should be ready to, and raring to go. Clay has new tires, he's going to be getting some new tires soon, uh, put on, I guess in June, it's not really that soon, so he'll have fresh tires, probably get an oil change, air filter change. I will say that these new tires are pretty good right now, although they're brand new. I mean, they're not going to be bad. They feel pretty sticky. Uh, it takes about a 75 to 100 miles to get them scuffed a bit so that you feel that tackiness. And they do feel really good, so... You can tell the big difference with worn out tires and fresh tires. Worn out tires... You can feel a little bit of skittishness with them, just a little bit, not a lot. But then when you get new tires on, it's like, oh my goodness, it's like driving a truck. You know, the tires just want to grip. <coughs> so, big difference. Always nice to get fresh rubber on the bike. So I think at this point, I am going to cut it off a little bit early. I've talked enough, and this is probably a plenty long video. So I hope you've enjoyed my return to motovlogging. Uh, kind of a boring thing, except me for rambling on about different things that are on my mind, different things about the motorcycle. Uh, there will be more of these, and I'll have specific topics. Um, and... Uh, when the ultimate seat arrives in four to six weeks, I will do a video about changing that seat out and my first thoughts of riding with it. You'll be along for the ride. But until then, there will be some other fun things to talk about and see different areas of the region where I'll be riding. So until that time, stay safe everyone, and we'll talk to you next time.